Did you see the announcement? Tylenol, acetaminophen, is the cause of autism. Not that simple. Hold on. I'm going to tell you all the realities around this, the myths, and what you can do about this to prevent this from happening. This was a big announcement. Uh, Trump, Bobby, Oz was there, and a bunch of other experts saying, hey, Tylenol is the big cause, and we waited for this. You know, some things happen if you didn't see the interview, if you saw the interview. Trump started talking about vaccines. Well, wait a minute. I was confused. Why was he talking about vaccines when Tylenol was the cause? There's a reason for that. You're going to stay tuned because as Trump does so well, he just kind of spills everything out there. There was a reason he did that, but there's something that we need to caution ourselves with. Okay, so what's going on with this Tylenol thing? First of all, I want to say this right off the top. This isn't something new. Something back in 2014, I remember doing a video about Tylenol and its link to autism-related disorders, the autism spectrum disorders. And I believe there was one in 17 or maybe it was 19. The point is, is that this isn't new. So what's happened? I think what happened is, is they started looking at those studies and then even newer studies. And they realized that this link is serious. But the point I want to make is, see, Tylenol increases the risk of autism. It's not the cause of autism, but it in fact does increase the risk, especially when there's other stressors involved. And we'll talk about that, what those stressors are. So what do I mean when I say that it's part of this perfect storm that takes place and all of a sudden autism occurs. What I mean by that is this. Tylenol affects and blocks certain receptors in the brain to a vitamin called folate, folic acid. And we need that vitamin for brain development. Think about that. If Tylenol blocks that and we don't get enough folic acid in the brain, it will affect brain development. And autism is a neurodevelopment problem. That's obviously going to lead to that problem if the folic acid is blocked. In acetaminophen, does cause that. So there's two receptors in the brain that folate can use, an alpha and a beta receptor, alpha being the main receptor. And that's also, we find that certain autoimmune, driven mostly by certain toxins and viruses and different pathogens, the autoimmune, meaning your own immune system can attack that and block that receptor as well. We're going to get more to that as another problem and another cause of autism. But acetaminophen affects that same receptor and therefore can block folic acid. Folic acid is part of brain development. I said that, but it also protects your DNA. Also, it affects a pathway, a detox pathway called the P450 pathway. And that's a pathway that affects how your brain or cells get rid of toxins. So it can cause toxins to build up in the brain, in the cells of the body and lead to inflammation. And of course, what we know about autism, neurodegenerative conditions, period, is that there's inflammation occurring in the brain unchecked uncontrolled. So folic acid plays a role in that detox pathway. Also, it affects something called methylation. Methylation protects our DNA. Methylation, if not appropriated, can turn on bad genes, can turn on inflammation cycles and lead again to brain problems and autism disorders. Methylation also is part of detoxing the brain as that other pathway. As methylation goes down, something called glutathione goes down. Yes, this also is affecting glutathione's acetaminophen Tylenol affects glutathione, inflammation. You get the point. Oh, it also affects the liver, which is a detox pathway. So you can see that it affects many ways that the body gets rid of toxins. It affects inflammation. So you can see why it's, it increases the risk factor of autism. The question is, is can a child have autism outside of Tylenol? And the answer is yes. Many autistic children, the mother would say, I never took Tylenol. And of course that's the case. See, because it only increases. It's associated with it. It's not the sole cause. I believe with any neurotoxic illness, whether adult or child, I believe there's a perfect storm, meaning all these things that happen, three things typically that happen at the same time, bam, all of a sudden we're in chronic inflammation and we end up with a diagnosis. But uh, let me say this, because Trump did say this too. Trump said he's a very logical thinker as a business guy. It makes no sense because they said this was one in 30,000 some kids, not that many years ago. 
right? 20, 30 years ago, whenever it was. And then it went to one in 20,000. Then it went to one in 10,000. And he gave the dates. And today it's one in 31 kids. In the state of California, one in 12. Okay, so what's going on? They're saying that it's a genetic disorder. Genes don't change that quickly. It's impossible for the numbers to go from one in 30,000. It was even more than that before, one in 41 and 50,000. And all the way to one in 10 or 12 in some states impossible. But yet the billions of dollars in research have gone to genetics when this is not a genetic disorder. He said, it must be something we're doing. Of course, we're causing this. And when you pin practitioners, doctors against the wall on this, you know what they'll say? They'll say, we're just diagnosing it better. Nobody believes that. Nobody. Scientific community won't bite on that. Nobody believes that. That's BS. They're insulting our intelligence when they say that. Think about this. I'm 60 years old. We didn't have an autistic kid in the school, let alone my classroom. Today, forget about it. Every one of us hearing my voice right now knows a family being affected by this. So don't tell me we were diagnosing it better today. Baloney. Not true. And don't tell me it's a genetic disorder. Genes take literally hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of years to change. And they're telling us in this short period of time, we've gone down to one in 31 kids. And in some states, one in 12, one in 10. So absolutely impossible. He made that point point well taken. But okay, so why then did Trump start talking about vaccines? <laughs> See, I believe it went down like this. Let's talk about acetaminophen increased association with autism. Let's warn people now, because if we can get women not to take Tylenol during pregnancy or worse yet, give a child, a young child Tylenol, which you should never do to bring down a fever, then we are going to change that number. We could potentially go back to one in 20,000 just by doing that. I don't know the number, but the point is, is that was the goal. And let's hold off on talking about the vaccine part, number one, we won't confuse people. Number two is that let's wait till all of these studies that they started are done and we're going to have even more evidence. But I can tell you this right now, the evidence that they have right now, and that's why Trump showed the hand, is showing an absolute causative factor. Once again, I'm not saying vaccines, just like I said, Tylenol is the cause of autism. No, it's part of this perfect storm that's happening today. But see, if I made the argument that Tylenol Tylenol is affecting the detox pathways, especially of the brain. Then we're giving these vaccines that purposely contain certain toxicants. So they actually even work. And what do I mean by that? But let me make that connection first. So if we're giving something that has toxins and then we're affecting the body's ability to get rid of it, then we have a perfect storm. We got a problem. Houston, we have a problem because now the toxins build up in the brain because the detox pathways are affected by the brain from the Tylenol. It doesn't get rid of the toxins. Toxins drive inflammation and inflammation is the cause of most problems. This is a true story. This was one of my patients from years ago. She brought her child in instinctively. She didn't want to vaccinate her two boys and just suspicious, whatever that thing is that women have that men don't have. She had it. Women have this about vaccines, by the way. I think Trump even said that. But what happened is she went in, they convinced her, scared her. She got the vaccines, one of which was the MMR, and I'm sure they stacked them up. Her boy starts crying, starts absolutely going berserk. Well, this happens all the time. They're scared. Yeah. She brings her son out in the car and in the car, she had taken her the visor off her son and she went to put the visor back on in the car and the visor didn't fit. She realized encephalopathy, that brain literally inflamed. She ran back in with her son. And the other one, this didn't happen right away, the younger one. And the brain literally inflamed to where the hat wouldn't fit. And the doctor told her, it's not a big deal. It wouldn't have been caused by the vaccine anyway. It is actually one of the listed side effects, brain inflammation. Don't insult our intelligence. Both of her kids, more the one more severe than the other, ended up on the autism spectrum. There's other things that can affect the detox pathways, other stressors, even low vitamin D. There's a lot of other things that they're going to come out. The administration is going to start talking about. Yes, acetaminophen, Tylenol is one of them, but there's other things that can affect the toxins from not getting out of the brain, accumulating, driving inflammation and driving disorders like we're seeing on the autism spectrum. Literally one in five kids today has some type of learning disability, ADHD. It's not just autism. There's a spectrum of conditions that we're talking about that are being driven by this perfect 
perfect storm. And again, vaccines being not the sole cause, but being part of this. I left off by saying these toxins, because in your mind right now, you're probably saying, why are there toxins in there? Let's just make toxin-free vaccines. Well, therein lies part of the problem. See, in vaccines, we have things that are viruses that are killed, attenuated, as it's said, meaning that they're not living. So therefore, to get the your immune system, your child's immune system, to respond to that pathogen, that virus, we need to stimulate the immune system. So they put things in it called adjuncts. Adjuncts are things like mercury. I'm going to talk a little bit about that in a minute. Aluminum and these toxins, and there's others, formaldehyde, etc. So these toxins excite the immune system, which raises up antibodies. And that's how we get, and I'll put quotes around it, the positive reaction from the vaccine in for it to work to give us temporary immunity. And I'll talk about that in a minute because that's problematic. But the fact is, is that these toxins excite the immune system. That's why when, you know, again, Trump said, why are we putting mercury and aluminum in these vaccines? We all know that mercury and aluminum are neurotoxic. They affect the brain. They cause brain problems. Like, why are we adding that? Okay. And they went through a time where they were taking mercury out and it started going back in, but there's still mercury and flu shots. There went more aluminum as the mercury came out. That's the point is that you need a toxicant in the product to excite the immune system. Otherwise it doesn't work. So my question is, well, if we take the aluminum and the mercury out, like Trump said they're going to do, and Bobby's already lobbied for, and uh, I believe that will happen. What are we putting in for the vaccines to work? Because we need something to excite the immune system. All right, maybe there's some type of toxin that's safer than aluminum mercury. Maybe that's the case. And by the way, I know Bobby personally. He's a man of integrity and a man who's been after to make health of children better. And that's been his aspiration and goal before he ever had an aspiration to run for president. He only wanted to run for president to change these numbers. And I believe he ended up in the right position to do so. And he's doing that. And he's doing that with every bit of his amazing talents that the man has. But his heart is right in this. And I'll tell you, for years, he's talked about mercury and vaccines. Nobody has taken more mercury out of even off the planet factories than Bobby has. And yet now people want to hang the guy saying he's doing bad. Why? But anyways, Bobby's two goals, and they call him an anti-vaxxer, is let's treat these vaccines like any other drug. And what does he mean by that? Do you know vaccines are the only drug that you don't have to prove safety and do double-blind studies? It's true. Look at the NIH's website. It's absolutely true. They don't have to prove safety. Every other drug, you have to prove safety using double-blind studies. They do not have to do that. He wants that to change, number one. Number two, do you know it's the only drug that you can't sue a drug company for damages. Oh yeah, so the mom that came out and her baby's brain was inflamed, yeah, she can't sue. She has to sue the government. That's bankrupt. So you can't even really sue the government. The point is that needs to change too. Now, imagine if we just change those two things and that's his goal. We can sue the drug company. What are they going to do? They're going to be forced to make a safer product and they have to do double blind studies. So there's a chance then we can make a safer product. I don't call that anti-vax. I call that good science. I call that making something safer and better for children. Why do we have to call it anti-vax? right? It's like, because that polarizes in the drug companies. This is their cash cow. Imagine a drug that you don't get sued for and you don't have to prove safety. Yeah, that's called a cash cow. Okay. So let's be able to talk about this and let's make something safer, but see, it's going to cost them. Anyways, I'm, I'm going off on a tangent there, but that's what Bobby wants. But here's the point is that these toxins are in there for a reason. And when you take acetaminophen that affects the detox pathway, bam, perfect storm. And you can see why it's happening in so many kids. So if we can just, what did Trump say? Trump said he gave the greatest advice. The MMR is known to basically be stacked full of a lot of toxins at once. He said, just separate them. That was great advice. And many people have made that advice. Other countries are doing that. Separate the MRI. Don't take them all one. So do four visits instead of one visit. I know it's more of a pain in the butt, but if you separate them, the chances of all those toxins going in at once, get lessened and the body can deal with them slower. Good advice. They talked about the hepatitis B. He said, why are we even giving it? Don't take it. Then he backed up and said, okay, just take it when you're 12. But his point is well taken because it's too much for a child. And again, that's the advice that's coming out of our government right now. So I'm very positive about that. I said fevers. Did you hear in that announcement? They said one other thing. They said that, oh, it's also shown that by lowering a fever, and that's why women take this and you give it to your young child, 
smaller baby is to lower the fever, you prolong the virus and the illness and complicate the illness. I've been saying that for years. This isn't new. Hold on a second. Ask yourself this question. Why does a fever happen? Do you know the answer? It's not a mistake. It's raising the body's innate intelligence that knows how to heal. It's raising up the fever because viruses don't duplicate. I think it's over 101 or 102. They stop duplication and it starts to kill them over a certain temperature, right? The viruses start to die. Bacteria start to die as well. So the fever is going up as a defense mechanism to save the baby's life or your life or whatever. So when you lower the fever, you're prolonging the illness, causing more problems. It's never a parent's job to lower a fever. You shouldn't lower the fever. I know your child is uncomfortable and you want to do something about it. That's why when you lower the fever, the child feels better, but you're prolonging the illness and causing more problems. Try peppermint oil on the bottoms of the feet or the back of the neck. Doesn't lower the fever, but it gives the same type of comfort to the child. Even the low back, a little bit of peppermint oil on the low back, the feet or the back of the neck works absolute wonders. If the fever goes to 107, I would say even 106, take the child to the hospital. Don't make the decision to bring down the fever yourself. If the fever is that high, it could be even poisoning, something to that degree. Check, bring the the child to the hospital. could be uh, meningitis. You know, then you go to the hospital. Rarely is that the case. And rarely do fevers get that high. Even my son, Daniel, always raised a fever of 105. He'd get sick 105. People would be like, oh my gosh, freaking out. He would be over it like that, less than 24 hours. He was my fastest and best immune kid. And it was because he ran these incredibly high fevers. Unlike my son, Isaac, who struggled typically to get to a 102, he definitely had more prolonged illnesses. So anyways, we like fevers. We don't want to lower fevers. And I would just want to give you a few facts. Oh, you know, I, I, I wrote this down because I think this is important. I talked a little bit about mercury in the vaccines and Bobby getting rid of the mercury. By the way, some of you may face this. You go to your doctor and you'll ask about mercury in the vaccines and they're going to say, oh, the mercury that's in the flu shot, as an example, and there's some other vaccines that it's still in, but is the safe mercury, thimerosal. That's what it's called. If you see the ingredient, which typically you don't see the ingredients, thimerosal is the derivative that contains mercury, but the form of mercury in that Mrs. Johnson is the safe mercury. Well, they got their information from a study that was done on monkeys many years ago because they tested the monkeys and in just days, it was gone. Wasn't in the blood, couldn't find it. So they thought, oh, the body just cleared it. So ethyl mercury, which is in thimerosal, which is in put in the vaccines is considered the safe mercury. Something happened. Another scientist said, hey, we kept those brains or the brains were kept from that study on the monkeys, correct? Yeah. He wasn't even studying this. I don't remember what he was studying, but guess what they found in all of the brains of the monkeys? You got it. The mercury. Thimerosal is the most toxic form of mercury. Yes, it's an organic form, but it crosses into the brain very rapidly, and that's why they didn't see it. So that's a problem with the mercury. Now, here's another problem. They started lowering mercury in some of the vaccines, but they increased aluminum. When you put mercury and aluminum together, you kill more rats. You know what they call that in the scientific world? Lethal dose value. So if you read, this has a lethal dose value of, that means more rats were killed with less toxic. Toxins. If you put mercury and aluminum together, you kill more rats when you have both than you do this much mercury or this much aluminum. And you can have this much of both and kill more rats. Imagine what it's doing to kids because we have more aluminum. Oh, you know where else we're getting aluminum? We're getting, yeah, don't use foil, aluminum foil. You get aluminum there. You get aluminum and deodorant. However, you're getting it from the air. They're putting it in jet fuel to make jets more efficient, saving billions of dollars. The fuel industry loves that or the jet industry. But the fact is, is it's in our food and water. We're getting more aluminum exposure than ever in aluminum and mercury. Bam! another perfect storm. Oh, and then we take acetaminophen. Oh, and then we have all these other toxic sources. Uh, You can see what the problem is. Oh, and by the way, ladies, this is a study called the DRASH study, a German study that showed the number of silver fillings in your mouth or any woman's mouth, not you um, necessarily, hopefully not, is proportional to how much mercury, because see, those fillings contain 50% mercury. And what happens is the number of fillings in mom's mouth that leach mercury from the fillings into the utero in the baby's brain. And that study was an autopsy study, meaning they looked at the baby's brains and found the more fillings in mom, the more accumulation and the more they found in the baby's brain. So what happens, detox pathways are affected. So what happens is then these children get vaccinated and they can't already deal another perfect 
storm. They can't deal and get rid of the toxins, so brain inflammation occurs. So my point is, is that it's not just Tylenol and acetaminophen. There is other factors. We're going to hear more about that. So all of that to say that what we need to do is just be educated. I'm not telling anyone to vaccinate. I'm not telling anyone not to vaccinate. I'm not telling anyone to take acetaminophen, not take acetaminophen, or not to take it. But the fact is, is we have to understand the risks of this. There's a time and a place for a medication, but you just have to know the risk and reward. I hope this helps. Please share the video because it will bring light and more clarity to many people very confused on this topic.